people always ask, what is it like to specialize in as a radiologic technologist? You have a couple options. So once you do your two year or four year program to become a radiologic technologist, after that, you are going to sit for what's called an ARRT licensure te uh, test. This test allows you to be able to operate and work x-ray machine equipment in the OR, in an outpatient setting, in a hospital, in a clinic, everywhere. And it allows you to do this nationwide. That is the difference between going to a quick six week program or an eight hour program, maybe that your state requires or allows because they don't have a license. And then you could just go take x-rays, but you're only allowed to work in clinics or doctor's offices, like chiropractor's offices. You're not allowed to work in a hospital with that because you're not a registered radiologic technologist. So that is the difference. You go to a two-year program and that's how you know you're in the right program. That is going to allow you to sit for the ARRT registry exam that gets you your registry where you can now work nationwide. And you see all these people that talk about, I'm making $100 an hour as a traveler. I'm making this and that as a traveler, $3,000 a week as a traveler. They are registered radiologic technologists. Now, can you specialize in other things? But let's first start with radiology. Is diagnostic radiology is where you start for most people. We'll get into the other things there. Go check out my other videos, which will explain more about other specialties and how you can do those like ultrasound, MRI, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy, without going to school to be a radiologic technologist first. We're just talking about becoming a radiologic technologist and what all that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis and what options you have in specializing. You can, after graduation and passing your ARRT and you're now a registered radiologic technologist, you are going to apply. You can apply again anywhere. Say you get a job at a hospital. Now you are going to probably work in the operating room or the OR. And what do you do in the OR? Well, you're going to push these things called a C arm, which is, it looks like a C actually. <laughs> it looks like a C and it uses live fluoro or live x-ray to take images while the doctor is doing surgery. Really cool. And there's a monitor that goes along with it as well. So it's two pieces of equipment. And you take those in each room. They're set up before the surgery because surgeries are always planned. There are very few surgeries where they'll need x-ray where they're going to just call you for an emergency. It does happen, but not always. And you're going to go in sometimes a quick little surgery where they'll need your C-arm. And then sometimes it's hours. Some surgeries can take hours. And some surgeons are a little slower than others, so it may take longer. But that is uh, pretty much you just listen to the doctor tell you how he or she wants you to angle your C-arm. They get to learn you, you get to learn them. They have their favorite rad text that they want in there, you know, but everyone usually has to rotate through the OR. You wear leg gowns to protect you, even though you stay six feet away during the fluoroscopy, but sometimes, you know, you are in that room for a period of time. So you do wear lead uh, gowns to protect your top and your bottom. So does everybody in the OR room as well, because they're all being radiated. That's one option. Now, the other option is working at an orthopedic outpatient at the hospital where you're doing all orthopedic x-ray diagnostic x-rays that's pretty cool it's it's a specialty within itself because everybody's not going to be doing orthopedic and be good at it because it's a special type of way that you do certain x-rays for doctors like feet most times in the hospital you lay the patient on the table and you take an x-ray of their feet well in orthopedics some doctors have different protocols they want to see x-rays while the patient is standing up because if they're doing surgery on a tendon or a ligament and you're laying down, that is not the truth of that ligament or tendon. They need to see that foot in motion and action, how it's going to hold up that weight, how the tendon and ligament look, how the bones all look while the patient is standing. So when they put them in the operating room, they're basing it off of the actual patient's everyday posture, right? Makes sense. So you have to know those kind of things. And the angulations can be different as well when it comes to orthopedics because certain doctors have their little things. The other options are going to be um, working in fluoro where you're working on barium enemas, uh, swallows, uh, different things where you work with speech pathology because you have patients, maybe you're working at a center for geriatric patients or you get a lot of nursing home patients in, you will see a great deal of barium swallows with that population of patients. So they mix in a barium drink and the patient has to drink it under live fluoro. Again, you're gonna be wearing leg gown to protect you because you're in there with the radiologist while they and the speech language pathologist has the patient drink on command. 
through a straw or actually you can use you through a straw though, but sometimes drink because uh, some people don't have a sucking ability to suck, so they have to use it or they'll pour it down a G tube if they're looking to see if the G tube is going in the right place. Uh, what are some other things? Yeah, barium enemas. You're going to be using fluoro to watch live as the patient gets contrast injected into their, uh, yeah, their, you know what, hoo -ha. And it actually is good because some people have fistulas, some people have issues going to the restroom, small bowel series, and then we take a series of x-rays through the colon, flat films, so the radiologist can look at those after he's injected air sometimes along with the barium contrast. So patients also sometimes have to drink the contrast and it's put into their bottom. That's a lot, but it's all to help the patients. And uh, we do that inpatient and outpatient, mostly inpatient, uh, in the hospital, excuse me, we do that in the hospital. But yeah, those are just some of the things in the routine x-rays, the ER. Sometimes some departments, especially trauma centers, if you work at a trauma center hospital, you are going to be in the ER. They sometimes have their own x-ray department inside of the ER. That's how busy they are. And you are down there. I mean, my husband worked at a trauma center for years and so did I. And it is like nonstop, <laughs> nonstop. But you really get your skills together. You really get your skills together. But I've been in this field for 22 years and really enjoyed. I've done x-ray, diagnostic, all of those things and more. I have done CT and MRI, and I've also gone to school for mammography training. Excuse me, mammography training. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There are more to come. I'm going to try to do them more this style because, you know, DoDash got everybody on social media just like, stop trying to be perfect, y'all. Just get on there and do it. And I want to bring you guys this really good content. And I'm a busy person. I don't have time to make it all pretty and fancy, but I do have a phone and a mic, and I can get on here and tell you what I know unscripted but scripted i kind of know what I'm, I know what i'm talking about but it's not a script so just talking to you guys i hope you enjoyed today's video be sure to subscribe check out my other videos and if you have not listened to the podcast we are a couple of rad text podcasts top five percent podcast in radiology and we'd love for you to download and be another listener so check us out here until next time turn those notifications on